Hey guys, CJ, I'll be back again with another reaction for you. Summer Game Fest is still underway, and now we are watching Day of the Dev. A bunch of indie games hosted by the one and only... Tim Schafer, oh my god. I was struggling. I went, I don't even know what I was thinking. I went to say the one and only Double Fine, and I'm like, no, I need the man. I need the man. Oh my God, what the fuck? Anyway, Tim Schafer, running day of dev, bunch of cool indie games to showcase. Um, we are going to switch right into it now and react to it. Hey, if you guys are seeing this, go over to youtube.com, or sorry, twitch.tv slash CJNB. It's a busy day, guys. I'm really sorry. I'm really sorry. I'm really, 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 really sorry. I'm trying my best. I'm losing my mind. It's been a busy couple weeks. Anyway, yeah, uh, day of the dev, I guess it just got started, so we're gonna get into it. Look at this, a Cuphead physical edition, also available. There's a Cuphead Collector's Edition? Guys, wouldn't it be cool if I bought and unboxed that thing? Wouldn't that be nifty if I was somehow able to get my hands on one of those things and I unbox it for a YouTube video and then I just happen to have it recorded but have to do a lot of editing to make it come out and hopefully be out this weekend but I can't promise anything and I'll get it out as soon as I possibly can? Would be weird. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you guys saw me freeze. I was I was trying to think of Tim Schafer's name and I just broke. Uh, what would you do with the puppet? Learn how to use it? Uh, I would maybe. I'd probably just mount it up. I probably wouldn't like use it. I'd try to use it a little bit, but. Millions of people watching. Millions of people. God, that can't be right. Millions of people. It's really grown since it started 10 years ago here in San Francisco. Day of the Devs was an idea from Double Fine. How's the audio? You guys gonna turn it up and down? ...to put on a show that really celebrated video games and focused on the fans and the developers and brought them together to meet and celebrate games. It started as a live event here in San Francisco where we had developers showing their games where people could play them and also listen to music and eat food and drink. And it was really just a festival of amazing creativity and a very inspiring event. And then during the pandemic, it became digital only. And now we're doing both, a live event and a digital showcase so people from around the world can enjoy all of these amazing games. We had record number of submissions this year. More people wanting to be part of Day of the Dev. You guys find she's been quiet? Fair enough. Let me turn it up. More world premieres today than ever before. I'm excited. I hope you're excited. Let me know how that is. Then you go more? Enjoy Day of the Devs. I know the trailers get loud, so I don't want to go like. What was that? It was It was That would be effects on that. It looks like. I love Tim Shaper so much. I'm pleased to introduce a brand new game from a team that is near and dear to my heart. This is from Greg Lobanoff and the team at Wishes Unlimited who made incredible games like Wander Song and Chicory. Oh. Here's their new title, Beastie Ball. They were teasing us on Twitter. I don't think they pronounced it yet. So oh. I love Chicory. Wonder Song stayed a little long. It was a little long, but. Hi, I'm Greg Lobanov, and I am bouncing off the walls excited to finally tell you what my friends and I have been working on together ever since Chicory. Oh, the Chicory Blush! Introducing Beastie Ball. Beastie Ball? Guys, is this Beastie Pokemon Ball is Volleyball? Ball? Coach a team of Beasties to play Beastie Ball, which is kind of like volleyball. You play as this customizable coach character, and you can explore this huge open world, recruiting all kinds of Beasties to your team. Then you can challenge rival sports teams. This looks awesome. This reminds me of Dodgeball Academia. Like the same reason I love that. I think I'm, oh. Were the Naruto, I saw the haiku books. I didn't see the Naruto Beasties ones. These are highly social creatures that evolved. This is so sports. cool. Oh, I In love this. State, they're constantly playing Beastie Ball to build friendships, to sell disputes, or just to have fun. When Beasties play together, they actually become friends with one another. This is so cool, and dude. Their personalities and their teamwork style, they can form different kinds of friendships. But whether oh, they become you mean that? Sorry, team. or rivals or partners or sweethearts, they'll get some kind of unique combo ability that only that pair of beasties can do, which can turn the tide in a really tough match. Yo, I love you guys. Thank you for watching. Hey, can I get some cream sodas or some kind of emote in the chat? I appreciate it. So with this game, we Reason really want to anything. the beasties agency as living creatures. They're doing their own thing, making their own decisions. They'll only join your team after being convinced by you fulfilling a certain set of conditions while you're playing against them. The goal isn't to collect as many beasties as you can. Thanks, but Papa. Your post, appreciate. Thank you, guys. Thank you very much. Love you guys. They grow and change, and the bonds that they form with each other. There they are, Ian. Y'all tavern. That listen. That's how I love you guys. You guys rock, thank you very much. We wanted to create a really wide variety of beasties 
that each have their own. Guys, sort of I'm. Oh, this is so cute! Concept artists and spending a lot of time on each design. All beasties have a range of colors and sizes, and their poses and animations are all hand drawn which gives us lots of opportunity to express their personalities and their different ways of moving. To help give each BC that personality, we've been doing unique voices for them. This is so each cute! I want to play you so bad! Performing that. But it's not all just friendships and rainbows. You gotta power for 10 minutes? Oh, burb. You come from a Clock's ticking. Around a nature preserve. And you lose a minute for, kind of for telling me. Nine minutes. I better see you. Nah, do your thing, dog. Stay safe. It's a big girl game. Ian, the I went to school to for the arts the animation. It was something I've always considered. To the top, um, the I feel like I'm in a spot where it's not a major priority for me, but I would love to be involved in the game making process, if that makes sense. Definitely definitely a bucket list item that'd be cool to be involved with, for sure. So no matter which way you go, you'll have a tough and exciting rise to the top. We're so excited to finally reveal this. It's a really special project for us. And if Beastie Ball looks cool to you too, then please check us out at BeastieBallGame.com. We're going to be revealing a crowdfunding campaign very, very soon, and we'd love to have your support. Thanks very much. We can't wait to talk to you more about Beastie Ball. Do they have, they have a Steam page? Go, go wishlist the game on Steam, you bastards. Go do it. In Hyperlight Breaker. Oh, Papa! Title in the Hyperlight universe, you'll assume the role. We're gonna play this together, boy. Skills. You'll be entering the Overgrowth, an amazing open world with everything from lush rolling hills to deep labyrinths. They'll be comprised of both handcrafted and procedural elements. Just how I like. I'm gonna fucking go. <laughs> like its predecessor, it'll be chock full of secrets and lore, sure to satisfy. <laughs> Day night. <laughs> Listen, if it's, I don't know if it's three or four player, but I'll skip work. <laughs> we'll figure it out. Once we have like a release date, we'll try and like see if like launch day works with like your schedule or my schedule. We'll see what we can do. I'm going to try and do it. If it's four player, I think it's, it's either three or four player. We'll try and get like a crew together. Although we're going to have to tell either Kanai, Khan, or Chris. Someone going to sit out. We got to keep it a secret though. This looks so sick. Hyperlight Breaker is a huge, stylish, bloody game. As is our MO, it's a game that's vivid but bleak. Bro. A crumbling world that can be brutal and beautiful. I love the characters guide so freaking it's a much. Major landmark Give release date. I, and the first I of its kind. An open forget if this is a 2023 or 2024 game. World twice. I forget. You could say it's a mix of incredible guns, absolutely, baby. Wild, distilled into the format of a roguelike such as Dead Cells or Hades. You can play alone. Or with friends cooperatively. Online. How many? Breakers How many friends? Will be presented fully through visual storytelling, where you'll discover and decipher the mystery of this world Ooh. and lost land from long ago. Every world will be different, loaded with dangerous creatures, razor sharp combat, vast overgrown wilderness, long dead civilizations, and new discoveries in a mysterious, vibrant, yet horribly ominous atmosphere. Each biome in the world is different, with unique dangers, set pieces, and stories of their own. There will be massive bosses to take down in an open structure with dangerous. I love this wolf boss. You've seen him before. He's so cool. Bosses scattered throughout runs. You'll pick up new gear, make new builds. Unlock like new I dig Risk of Rain too. This one totally looks more my speed. So I'm very excited for this we one. Learned so much from our previous games. Dude, the art style is so great, tech, Papa. Deep well of knowledge and experience as a team. Breaker is the culmination of all that incredible work. And we're excited to have you experience it for yourself. We'll have a lot more information on the game as we come closer and closer to early access later this year. Cool. You heard it, Baba. Later this year. We're only halfway, so we got time. And now, in true Day of the Devs fashion, we're traveling halfway around the globe to Transylvania to bring you a game that is not- Breath of the Wild Souls, <laughs> kinda. From developer Stone Skip and publisher I Am 8-Bit Presents, I'm thrilled to bring you a world premiere title that is not only relaxing and enjoyable, it's chill and vibey. Let that anxiety go while you play Simpler Times. Simpler Times, okay. World premiere. This is a vibe. Hi 
there, welcome. I'm Lara. And I'm Dragos of Stoneskip. Dragos? We are a small it. team from Transylvania and our mission is to create meaningful interactive experiences. Our first game, Simpler Times, sheds light to the beauty of the ordinary and serves as a place from the past where you can be present. Simpler Times Looks follows so Tyna on a heartwarming journey through her memories as she prepares to leave her childhood home. I'm putting on my wish list. <sighs> Man, it's getting pretty full. It's starting to feel like I'm never gonna come back. We want you to slow down and savor the present moment by immersing you in Chat, the chat, chat. It's can we play it? Season. Chat, can we play it? Favorite. Can I play it on stream, chat? Through visual storytelling are you going to watch it? Are you going to be excited about it? Are we going to cry together? Chat? It does look super nice. She drew on the wall! She's going to be in trouble. I'm the little guy. With each puzzle, I need to <laughs> get it. To be there to if this is, oh, this is one that's like, dude, comes out today. Like leaves from a plant to more complex ones, like building a birdhouse. I, 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 I doubt it's coming today, but like, it looks so good. It reminds you of, I played, um, I really I for trial period, uh, a star named Dios. Yeah, the star named Dios. We played that one. This looks very similar. Uh, less puzzle based, I guess, but still. We wanted to create a space where players- Pop, it's your dog drawing. Slow down and enjoy something meaningful. So cool. Simpler times stems from stories we believe need to be told and heard. Inspired by this very place we're now sitting in, the game is a reflection of the physical spaces we spend. I, I love, listen guys, I love so much when we can get excited about the same indie games, but I can tell you guys so that I'm excited and you're like, I am too! Window. It's hard to believe that I This is the game I need for my anger. It looks so calming. There are so many great you indie games like that. That's why I want to I need to do like a cozy games video. I haven't made one of my like here's three indie games that blah 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 in months. So I need to get better at that. Simpler Times is coming soon on PC and other platforms. So make sure to wishlist on Steam and follow us on social media. Thanks for taking the time to listen. We hope you'll enjoy playing Simpler Times as much as we enjoyed creating it. Bye. 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 It's like childhood is the beach and growing up is the sea. Can I still I take it. all these seashells with me? Can I lock them in a chest with my memories? Pretty sure this room of the, the lo fi girl. <laughs> they went like, I'm so high right now. Imagine if we're in a video game, but IRL. <laughs> they do look like they were just super chill. I saw today, I got excited. I'm like, it said wish Sad Owl Studios and Thunderful Publishing. Oh, really Thunderful? Puzzle game built around a camera mechanic where the photos that you take become 3D worlds to explore. This is Viewfinder. Guys, guys, this game got a release date today and I cannot wait to play this game. I played the demo. It is so freaking good. I think the demo just came out today on PlayStation. Guys, please, if you ever play a puzzle game that I recommend, I think it's this one. It's what viewfinder. So it's the one where you take the pictures and you like walk playing. through the thing. Ah. Oh. Gives players a lot of freedom. What's an old phone? Yeah, the camera game. There. You can take photos or find photos and then Watch it. Look, you put it down and then it's just a world. It's a new world. You can walk in there. <laughs> Hang on. Did you just shift reality? It's so cool. Sick. What makes it unique is the central mechanic where you're using a camera and pictures to reshape and reconfigure the world around you in order to solve challenges in creative ways. It's such a unique I love it so experience much. and I think everybody is just going to have a different experience of how they play Viewfinder and that's just... I, think so. I thought someone knocked behind me, it was in the game. A perfect fit. A perfect fit. Elegant solution. Yeah, if you guys haven't seen the trial period where I played this, I played the demo. That I was I was right. infatuated. Dog, I was so there. You know that emptiness you get in your chest when you're like, "This is so cool. I've never you seen something like this before." I had that the entire time playing this demo. It is absurd games, how much fun I had playing this like game. The gameplay of Portal combined with the visual illusions of Superliminal or Antechamber. People have also compared okay. it to The Witness and uh, Manifold Garden and various other... My favorite part is everything they're showing, I think it was directly out of the demo. No, nah, I think that's game, new. But, it's very but like, sandboxy and playful. a lot of this is not... 
the same thing we've seen already. Now this is new, but like I'm ready for all the secrets this game is hiding from me. The goat has to be trippy as fuck, right? It's just a very important lesson in creation. Viewfinder is created by different people. And, oh, you shit. Know, we have people from all over the world who have such a diverse and interesting... I did post it. I dropped the battery off the map by accident. It was really it's funny. I had to rewind to get it back. <laughs> Props and items and yeah, in the video, I like move, I like turn, I hit the battery off like a, a shelf and it like falls out of the mat. Yeah, bro, it's so pretty. Like sort of make these special spaces that really represent that character, who they are, what they like to do. I'm sure you noticed by now, but using film was always Mirren's idea. Is that the cat? One of her. Welcome back, Burb. We counted. That was 59 minutes. You're fired. I'm kidding, bud. So Whoa, shut up! Always fond of games. It's just very important for us to just I... put in what we know. So it was tending out. All right, cool. I was testing you. Also, Good job, bud. You know, have a glimpse <laughs> of the experiences that we've had. I can't. Ah! Let's go. This game looks so good. I can't wait to play it. We received a record number of submissions for this Summer Game Fest edition of Day of the Devs, but this next game didn't actually come through that process. We have eyes everywhere, and the curation team is always looking for games. This next one actually came from Twitter because the creator was posting all these amazing GIFs, and we reached out via DM and, and asked if we could feature the game. Uh, so here it is, this beautiful, gorgeous, hand-drawn ghost story called Haunty. Hello everyone, my name is... There's always a spot where I'm like, I follow a lot of indie games on Twitter and I hope it's one that I follow. I'm like, I know that one! Called Haunty. This is not one that I know. This is not one that I know. This is a new one for me. I actually don't even see it on Steam. It looks hella the cute though. The main mechanic in Haunty is that as a ghost, you can haunt things and get access to their abilities. Uh, there's a big variety of things that you can haunt in this game. I think you'll have a lot of fun sort of exploring around and seeing what different things you can haunt and the abilities that they give you. I can't find the game on Twitter! Core mechanics resemble very much a twin stick shooter. However, unlike twin stick shooters, it focuses less on the high intensity moments and more on I keep finding haunted game cafe and that's someone I use the twin stick paradigm to create fun. Maybe they'll give a link at the end like a pull up in the game. Haunty follows the story. Listen, I'm just saying so far I've seen more games I'm excited about a day of the dev than I was at Summer Games Fest and like that's the shot of Summer Game Fest. I just shows how much I love indie games. <laughs> The progression and story of Haunty both center around collecting these stars, and the stars have this special ability that they give ghosts access to pieces of their past life. Kirby but limbo style? I, I mean, kinda. The You're not wrong. The characters are all carefully crafted with a 2D hand-drawn style, so there's a lot of painstaking frame-by-frame -frame animation work in there. It's also got like kind of like a Gris style to it. It looks so good. Excuse me. Ooh, sorry. So it all sort of comes together to give you this sort of tour through the afterlife, chilled out experience. If this is something you're interested in, be sure to wishlist it. It helps us out a lot. See, I can't. Oh, it's two eyes. That might be why I didn't the find next it. Game is a bit of a blast from the past. It arrived on the scene around 12 years ago, quickly became the talk of the town, and won a handful of awards, including the Seamus McNally Grand Prize at GDC's Independent Games Festival. But then, shortly afterwards, both the game and its creator vanished. That game was Cart Life, a slice of life simulation game that put you in the shoes of various street vendors and tasked you with setting up Cart a successful life. business selling papers and newspapers. As the story unfolds, so I finally have the hearts of the uh, for the Master Sword. So I'm gonna grab that, flow, begin, and then go play. There you go, there you go, Burb. It was a truly unique, powerful, and special game 
And it's super sad that it's been unplayable now for the better part of a decade. But it gives me great pleasure to tell you that lovingly restored and better than ever, Cart Life is back. That's cool. Hmm. Yeah, I don't, I'm not familiar with this one. Hi, I'm Nick Herman. I'm with Ad Hoc Studio, and we're here to show you Cart Life. Car Life is a retail simulator developed by Richard Hoffmeyer and was originally released in 2013 where it won a bunch of awards at the Independent Games Festival. For a variety of reasons, he ended up pulling it off Steam, but all of us at Ad Hoc are such big fans of Richard's work. Now we're partnering with him to help bring it back. I thought the black and white was going to be like a stylistic thing for the trailer. I guess this is like the actual gameplay. Papers, please, too? I don't think in quite. Life, you can play as three different characters in any order. Each have their own unique There was a game uh, they showed yesterday, Burb. Uh, it's called Corpo it Nation. Games. That looks a lot a like Papers, Please, except it's more like a, a corrupt daughter. business. All the while you should check that one out. Her new coffee cart. Andrus is a Ukrainian immigrant who is trying to put down roots in a new town by opening a newspaper stand. And Vinny has big dreams, but never Paper enough money to, <laughs> He's hoping that selling his homemade bagels will help turn things around. Homemade bagels. Managing your own cart is not an easy job. Just like in real life, in cart life, your resources are limited. You need to take care of yourself and others, and how you prioritize the needs of your cart against the personal needs of each character will determine the outcome of their stories. The world of cart life is alive and filled with characters who are potential customers that you'll get to know as you I'm interested to, to kind of see the story about this no is what right I feel like I want like a, a no clip documentary on like what happened to the game where it went and what the process was like bringing it back everyone's experience will be because I almost think of like Fez where like they were making a Fez too but everyone made it was being like ass so he's like fine I'm just not gonna make it this release like when they said there was a game that disappeared I honestly thought they were like yep Fez too baby here it is mechanics the first and thought. We really look forward to sharing it all with you on PC and console. But I also know what's going on with that guy. I don't know if he even makes games anymore, or if he's just like, nah, screw it. The skateboard renaissance has been going on for the last couple years in games, and as we get deeper into the grind revival, Who are we skating with? Uh, things are getting a little more avant-garde and daring. This next one gives you all that Tony Hawk mechanical goodness that you crave, but with a heavy helping of demons and brimstone. Uh, this is the world premiere of Hellscape. Hells Hellscape or Hellskate? I Hello. hope it's Hellscape. My name's Jordi Panembosa, also known as Quibble Cup. I'm the CEO and founder of Phantom Coast. And today, I'll be talking Hellscape. about okay. Hellscape. That's pretty cool looking. I don't really do like the skating games, but this looks sick. All right, Anton, first try. Here we go. This is one that like, if someone's like, I need a skateboarding game, this is one that I would recommend. Zagreus, but he's balling. <laughs> Too slow. Like I got beat. Again. Is it a skateboarding roguelike? Is that what this is? It takes place in Vertheim. Here you play as Anton Falcon, a skater through and through. All Anton wants to do is skate at Vertheim's fabled beach. Even if that means he has to go through the gods and monsters who will do anything to stop him and his skater friends from doing what they love. I like the character designs, they're pretty cool. The skateboard mechanics are very similar to the arcade-like games such as Tony Hawk Pro Skater. I mean, our lead game designer Steve actually worked on Tony Hawk's Underground. It started 
a long time ago, the idea, and the far off, far flung land of 2002, I worked on a game <laughs> called Tony Hawk Underground. And at the time we were working on it, we were thinking, man, this really looks a lot like a, an RPG or an action RPG. You have all these stats and you're upgrading and all this kind of stuff. It's super cool, super neat, right? But of course, we're bound to Tony Hawk. Do you guys play, anyone play like the Tony Hawk games or any skateboarding games? It you guys excited for like skateboard and stuff? Graphics, create and imply I don't know if I got any world, skateboarders in the community. It's not a coherent world that you can visit. So that was one of the motivations behind Hellscape. Hellscape is a skateboarding roguelike game. It fuses together old school skateboarding with the tricks and traversal, manuals, grinds, jumps, balance meters with a roguelite structure. Never played Just close like was watching Skate 3. Okay, Skate 3 is yeah, probably like the pinnacle of most people. The I played it with my dad before. Okay. I got you, got you, got you. I when played the living shit, the living shit out of Tony thing. Hawk's downhill jam. Oh, downhill jam. Okay. Is that the one with the actual like skateboard, like the actual controller? Or, or am I mixing that up? Act as weapons. The combat in our game can be described as a fast-paced skateboard hack and slash. While you have your light and heavy attacks, the core of the gameplay revolves around your skateboarding tricks. This is what on Wii? Okay. Be quite easy for is that the one though with the actual play. thing? Because I know there were Wii ones you just played the controller, but there were some where you had the very, actual very skateboard that you would stand on in the beginning and, and do the moves. It teaches you and ramps up the skill of the skateboarding where you need it. I never really played it. the Tony Hawk games, so I'm never really sure which one's which. I saw people like Pro Skater 2. Look at yourself. Your wing, Ooh. your arm. What do you think happens when that gets to your head? Hellskate. Thank you for watching this reveal cool. of Hellskate. Wish listening to the game would mean the world to us. Oh. Yeah, if you guys are interested in this one, like seriously, go to Steam and wishlist it. Because it really helps the devs game, like Henry make more money it, to make their games. Half a hit. That's <gasps> yes! That's yes! That's yes! So <laughs> I'm so excited to play this game. Be many things can be anything, in fact. He has the curious ability to be able to transform into anything he can reach. Using this peculiar it's, no, it's power definitely Tony Hawk one. flexing form, you'll live the life of the title character, navigating sandbox situations crafted by Zurich-based developers, Lululu Entertainment, and in so doing, maybe ponder see philosophical it. questions. Who is? No, I'm thinking Tony Hawk. This is what I'm thinking of. Is what does it mean? Tony Hawk to Ride, this is what I'm thinking Henry. about. You got like an actual skateboard. Welcome. May I introduce you to Henry? Henry's Look, I'm so anyone. excited for Henry. <laughs> he well, turns into everything. stuff. <laughs> Henry can transform into everything in their reach. Yes, everything. And that's how they manage their daily life. The familiar noise of Henry's alarm clock announces the dawn of a new day. And it will keep ringing oh, until Henry so gets bad. up and calms the nervous, quivering machine. Penny, but you can kick your punch. Okay, bet. Right, it's such a weird controller. Like, I feel like I only remember it because I worked at GameStop for a while. Henry's ready for their morning routine, which they usually start by making... I hope we get a release date for this one. <laughs> Looks like a blobfish, kinda. Staying in bed is tempting, but only leads to regret later. Henry knows Same, honestly. The world, literally made this morning. Start off by making your own bed. Completing this simple task in the morning gives Henry a little bit of pride and the feeling of control over their life. With part of the morning routine done, Henry was ready to freshen up. I, I, guys, I can't wait to play this game. It's gonna be hours, so much Henry fun. There, lifting the seat up and down, pretending it was a singing. I want to be a toilet. <laughs> not too Don't be weird about that. <laughs> Henry bought a turmeric soap. They didn't know. They just what about the void background? Exactly so what I'm assuming is happening skin. is as you unlock it, you're like building out the house that you're in. I'm assuming it's still gonna stay like the void, but as you like finish the bathroom level, you're gonna unlock a new imaginary door that's gonna open like the garage level. And then after you beat the garage, you're gonna open the backyard and the backyard will take you to the grocery store or whatever. Like, I don't know if it's gonna get that big. I assume it's gonna stay in one house, but. All clean and dry, Henry is. I still want to play this game. It's so cute. Renegade looks so cute. It looks so freaking cute. Yeah, so Practice there's the kitchen. The beverage is important, and so is keeping up with the news. It's like each room's getting more. Like there's more items and more things to mess around with. This week, that's all for now. Have a wonderful.
It's almost, honestly, it's almost like Untitled Goose Game in the way, like, here's the list of things to do. Fuck around and find out and then move to the next room. I dig it so much. You can be a ducky! <laughs> the best drink Henry can make from beans. The candy of nature. Delicious. Well fed and well informed, Henry has to get ready and pack for work. <laughs> this is just perfect. Yo, why burnt the toast so much? If Henry takes the lunchbox and leaves now, they can catch the eight o'clock bus. Double the Henry, double the fun. Go up. Play Henry's not so ordinary everyday life. I feel like I want to play this one alone. I feel like this, this is a single player game for me. Everyday life with a twist. <laughs> oh, I was hoping for a release date. I was really hoping for a release date. I should already have this one. From Yeppy Carlson, a creator who's wish list well known check. for his work as yep, sorry, I'm a wish list. on Limbo and Insult. No. <laughs> we had the honor of working with him to publish two of his solo projects as part of Double Fine Presents. Rhythm action platformer 140 and co-op arcade shooter Thoth. Two of the Thoth. most fiendishly well-designed and fun puzzle games I've ever played that truly give you a sense for and appreciation of Yeppy's contributions to those Play Dead titles. His new game sees him teaming back up with Jakob Schmidt, composer of 140, and applying his trademark puzzle skills to a beautiful, mind-bending adventure game. This is Cocoon. Okay. Hello, I'm Jago. Yeah, this was announced Co last year, I think. Geometric Interactive in we haven't seen too much about it. I would like to show you what our amazing team has been working on for the last couple of years. Our game, Cocoon. See, it reminds me a lot of uh, Creature in the Well, which is like that top-down pinball action game. It looks really cool. Cocoon is an adventure game with multiple worlds, and each of these worlds are contained within an orb. Let me demonstrate by jumping out of the world which we are currently exploring. Just like that, we are now in a world outside. Yeah, I drink up, Senpai. Get that, get that. You know what? I got let me hydrate myself. The orange orb here contains the world we were previously exploring. Let's jump out one more time. We are now in a like world. Like, why did my dog? He was a bit too playful uh, right now. You can His this world using least thing scratch me. Ow! Did you beat him up? can be placed on switches to power devices and solve puzzles. This one looks really, this looks like one that I would like to play and like review. And I don't know that I'd want to stream this one. Pipes. You know what I mean? Excuse me. Been a long day. We're almost halfway done, I think. <laughs> you can use the hierarchy of worlds within worlds to solve interesting puzzles. For example, to safely avoid this moving barrier, you simply jump out of the world, let it pass by, and jump back in. Now, Cocoon is not only about exploration and puzzles. Within each world, you have to face a mighty guardian. 
Here is I'm excited to see this. Of one of these this this part reminds me a lot of Death's Door, which actually might have just sold me a little more in the game. <laughs> Damn, look at that big thing. It makes squishy noises. Kill it with fire. <laughs> I don't know, it's raining, it might not work. Oh, we got friends. He got friends, y'all run. Oh, you gotta like use the steam to like break the, like the vines and then throw the giant ball. That's pretty cool. We hope you look forward to exploring the mysterious worlds. Of I do today more than before. Later this year on Steam, Xbox, PlayStation, and Nintendo Switch. I think I have this one more system too. Yeah. This looks cool. I'm excited about it. Excuse me. Cocoon. And now, I'm pleased to bring you Sorry, a title stretch. from French-Canadian developer, Impossible. In this relaxing artistic exploration game, you play a painter with a watercolor brush and a whole city to explore. This game is more than appropriate for the Devs Summer Game excited. Fest edition because its title, Just like me. AK, in French, translates to the word summer. Hi, my name is Laszlo, and I'm the creative director Like Camp Impossible. Laszlo? We are a small. Search out You know, know what? Thanks, Emba. I appreciate it. On our first title, it day. <sighs> it day. Oh, it reminds me of Unfinished Swan. This looks really cute. Oh, I'm in this chair all day, dog. Whew. Oh my God, it's in very day, much like the Unfinished the Swan. <laughs> with every surface acting like a blank canvas, just waiting for you to fill it with color. It looks so cozy. I want play it. It means summer in French because it's set in our French-speaking hometown of Montréal, Canada. As you step into the shoes of a painter who's traveling abroad for well, the summer. This is a game for people who love Be exploration. beware. You're free to roam open city scenes at your own pace, following your curiosity, getting sidetracked, and discovering secrets along the way. Montreal. When you fill something with paint, Montreal it extract its color as droplets of experience. And as you level up, you'll become able to unleash larger splashes of paint that reveal a bigger part of the world at once. You'll also meet plenty of locals, taking part in their lighthearted, everyday anecdotes. And some of them will even commission artworks from you. Mm -hmm. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> Using a bike, you can travel quickly. Oh, the cursor, the I didn't even see it. And paint those commissions on canvas. Montreal sucks. Listen, I ain't say that. Burb did. I know Burb from Canada, so we can make that call, but I don't know. That's where your creativity comes into play. She got a paint? Easel, you can create gorgeous watercolor artworks using anything you've discovered in your expedition oh. so far. Steps on your canvas can be freely moved, resized, rotated in 3D, and even recolored. That's the cool, I like it. You put your own spin on commissions. And if you're feeling inspired, Yo. you can paint as many creative artworks as you like without any kind of limitation. I love With that. With unlockable stamps at your disposal and dozens of commissions to inspire you. I wanna play it even more. Imagination. Apart from living your best life as the friendly neighborhood painter, you'll also get to meet other like artists like Marianne, an ambitious photographer, and Theo. A Hockey? Musician. That's Among Senpai was years. like, oh, dude, <laughs> you, to you can paint, them, you can spin all the items around, but Hockey! <laughs> an abandoned building that could become your very own painting studio. I love this. But you'll have to dive into that story for yourself. It is coming out in 2024, and we hope you'll enjoy your adventures as a traveling painter in this <laughs> yep. crafted whimsical summer world. 
Hi, everybody. How are you liking the show so far? It's this so is fun. Thanks, Tim. We take a brief break to talk about the long and complicated process by which we accept games into the nominating committee and all the legal ramifications and the technical rules that go with the accounting of the... Tim, sorry. I, I thought that... Yeah, I thought important. I was doing something here, too. Uh. All right. Uh, <laughs> all right. Hey, Kelly from Indie Mega Boot. I love here. her glasses. It's a very exciting announcement. We're back. Woo! That's awesome. If you're a fan of indie games, you may have seen the Indie Mega Booth at shows like PAX West and PAX East. I haven't, I've never decade, been. Bringing together a curated selection of the best up and coming indie titles. Games like Crypt of the Necro Dancer, Tunic, Disco Elysium, Spirit Fairer, Celeste, Mini Metro, So many bangers, Ashton dude. Air, the Stanley Parable, and Papers, Please have all been part of the Indie Mega Booth community. Phone notification if you're a dev, shit. you'll likely know us from Turn our industry off. work, such as our GDC showcases, our presence at Bit Summit, our global outreach and events, including a robust scholarship and grant program. And if you've never heard of any of this, well, that's fine. Just think of us as like a stepping stone into the games industry, where folks who love indie games can connect with each other, <gasps> that's a guy from TikTok. games, and be part of a welcoming, diverse, broad, creative community. Oh, Indie Mega Booth has been in hibernation during the pandemic. I'm not going to beat you. Yeah, so sounds good, homie. that we're finally waking up from our big, long slumber, and we're ready to move forward with IMB 2.0. Head on over to our brand new website, IndieMegaBooth.com, and be Indie No by signing up for our newsletter. Learn I'll about new that. games, upcoming showcases, digital sales, and the best ways to help support the games and developers that you know and love. As we've always said, individually we're tiny, together we're mega. That's awesome. That's so exciting. I love that. <laughs> well, we have another world premiere for y'all, and it's also really thematically appropriate for this showcase. Uh, you'll see why in a second. Uh, it's from the aesthetically amazing studio called Land and Sea. Uh, they're famous for the Alto series that you know and love, but this next one is not what you're expecting from them. Uh, it'll be hurting your way. It'll be flocking your way. Oh, uh... I like hurting. What is it? We're... <laughs> It'll be hurting your way. Too many sheep? Year. What's the name of the game? Summerhill. Nope, not even... Nope, sheep. never mind. Not the game I thought it was. <laughs> Hi there. My name is Harry Nesbitt, and I'm the founder and creative director of Land and Sea. We're a small team from the UK, best known as the developers of the Altos Adventures. Oh, okay. Now, I've never played those, but I remember, um, I remember them existing. Team and laying the groundwork for our most ambitious project yet. It's an entirely new IP that aims to build on the themes that we care about most as a studio. And we're super excited to be able to share this exclusive first teaser with you today. So please take a look and I'll be back at the end to tell you more. I'm interested to see what this is. Go like, yo, enjoy the lurk, homie. I appreciate you keeping the stream up. You're a real one, Burb. So I get to be a shepherd. Maybe. Y'all just push all your sheep towards the ledge and I think they're gonna jump off. This is pretty. So it's a puzzle game about herding sheep? Is that what I'm getting from this? Summer Hill. Life loss and livestock. It looks cool. This seems like one I'd like really. I I, I don't think it's much of a stream game. Like I, I see myself sitting on Discord watching movie, and just game. doing the puzzles. So, you know what I mean? To give you a little bit more detail, Summer Hill is a story-driven puzzle game in which you play as a young shepherd and their dog. Together, you'll be setting out to rescue your lost flock that have been scattered across the mysterious land that lies at the border of your home. Summer Hill brings together gentle problem solving, fluid herding based gameplay, and striking pastoral landscapes to tell a timeless coming of age folktale. 
As a team, we've been massively inspired by the rich history and cultural impact of sheep herding across the world. There are a few people or places that haven't been impacted in some small way by the practice of shepherding. What's sheep? Even the name, Summer Hill, is a name often given to highland pastures where sheep are taken to graze during the warmest months of the year. In many ways, sheep herding is in our DNA, and we really want to do justice to this timeless tradition and tell a story that could only be told in this way. We're also super excited to be working again with our longtime collaborator, Todd Baker. Todd is a composer and hey, audio designer it's time. best known for his work on games such as Monument Valley 2, Dreams, and our very own Alto's Odyssey. We can't wait to share more with you, so if you'd like to be the first to hear about what we're up to, please head over to our Steam page to wishlist the game, or go to summerhill.game to join our mailing list. Thanks again, and we look forward to sharing more with you again soon. Looks cool. I like it. Next up, we have an update on Eternites. Uh, this is from Studio Psy. Eternites. Which one was that? A few friends helping out on the side. And it's a dating action game. Now, you've heard a lot about this title. Uh... Sorry. Help me. I'm sorry, Greg. I know I shouldn't be interrupting Day of the Devs. But it's urgent. A virus has turned most of us into... Into... <sighs> I don't know how much longer we can hold out. It won't be easy, and the road will be long, but who knows? Maybe we'll find one more thing worth fighting for. Eternite is a dating action game that takes adrenaline-fueled combat and mixes it together with a heartfelt love story. Can I be honest for a moment? With all these infected, Dating? Yeah, I, I feel like I know this one, but I, I don't recognize it. So I'm these moments that I'm happy to have not sure what exactly is happening. <laughs> New stream game. <laughs> Maybe? Fighting for our lives, solving puzzles, exploring dungeons. It all seems easier when you have someone special by your side. To make things less scary. So... What now? Increase your confidence. Did you just shush me? <laughs> because the teacher might hear us. Hey. Have you ever passed a note to your crush? No. Uh, I, I mean, or you, you can just fight for friendship. That's cool and not... Uh, when the relationship bar is full. Cheesy. What the fuck kind of discount stereotypical romance anime is this? So many mini games that can help you unlock unique it's an interesting one. I, I don't know that it's quite in the wheelhouse of what I'm yeah. you can into. Monsters, explore dungeons, but date? there's definitely an audience for I this mean, though. So many things like train, scavenge, date. <laughs> date. <laughs> date twice. Uh, anyway. You have to manage and balance all these activities if you want to save the world. The clock is ticking. Okay. Cool. Uh, bye! So, yes, uh, yeah, it's, it's a game. Yeah, I don't know if that's one for uh, for us, but you know, you know. Wish list now. You know. Next up, from Italian Icelandic developer Evil Licorice, comes a nostalgia-fueled gadget-building sim that demystifies electronics engineering and allows you to share your creations with the community. Hello, everyone. I'm Marco Bancale from Evil Licorice, and I'm one of the designers of Retro Gadgets. Oh my God! I thought we found we're friends on TikTok. Although it takes me forever to be something like this. They said I retro gadgets and I wasn't even thinking about the game. I was thinking like, are you just talking like about retro gadgets as, like, as a concept? <laughs> or I press the buttons. And this is where the idea for retro gadgets comes from, is to being able to build digital gadgets with little effort. We love uh, Pico 8 by Alexa Love. I picked this up recently. I've yet to have a chance to play it. I need to, I need to check this one out. Games in Lua. And we also love Shenzhen I.O. by Zaktronics because it managed to teach you low-level programming effortlessly. And Retro Gadget tries to take the best of both worlds and adds a layer of hardware building and customization. All this is packaged in a cozy and retro This is really cool. I love this. 
Fake Boy Retro. Yeah, fantastic community. And Yo, the, Cold Lucario, what's poppin', homie? Sorry, I've been long ass. It's been a hell of a couple months, dude. I get it. Life do be crazy, but I appreciate you hanging out today. So please We're doing good. We got a bunch of and, uh, E3 style events going on today. Is in Day of the Devs, Steam, Summer Game and Fest, Evolver Showcase next. It's going well, man. Thank you for asking. Yeah, dude. This game, this game looks really cool. If I need to check it out. the Mars Curiosity rover on one of its missions, you very well may have become fascinated by one of the hyper-specific contraptions and gadgets it keeps on board to measure... I need a fake boy retro. <laughs> water. Our next game poses a very important question, though. Sure, Curiosity can tell us the weather on a planet millions of miles away, but can it deliver a pizza? In Mars First Logistics from Shape Shop, you'll be given the task of carrying awkwardly shaped objects from point A to point B by assembling and I don't know what I'm bah, getting into here. And in doing so, perhaps you will solve Here's your dad, pepperoni based problems that truly matter. Hello, I'm Ian McCarthy <laughs> from Shape Shop. <laughs> We're a small team based in Melbourne, Australia, and we're making this game, Mars First Logistics. In Mars First Logistics, you'll be helping to establish a colony on the surface of Mars. Hmm. You'll do this by transporting often awkwardly shaped objects between A and B, using vehicles that you design and build yourself. That looks, that looks something right there. Kind of fun. <laughs> no, you're gonna spill the pizza. As you need an extra the joint, pizza, the game will give you new toys to play with. Okay, so you can deliver the pizza out of the box. Got it. <laughs> I like this. Uh, well, that's great, dude. Like I said, I've always said before, like, I know life's crazy. You can't always make every stream and sometimes just like long struts, but I always appreciate whenever some, someone stops in to hang out for 10 minutes, 20 minutes, 20 days, whatever the case is, I appreciate you, Doug. The game is set in a vast open world and you're free to pick and choose which jobs you'd like to take on. There's a mix of procedurally generated side jobs and handcrafted main contracts. In the main contracts, you'll be helping to construct new buildings in the game's world. This is cool. Do you like the building thing? Really not my like typical wheelhouse, but One of the there's something that's the simplistically complex about this, if that makes sense. Item and deliver it safely to its destination. Like this seems like part of a big AAA game that I'm like, oh, I gotta do this. I just wanna play the game as opposed to like, this is the game and I really like that. I, like, I immediately think of like Kingdom Hearts and having to build like the gummy ships. So I'm like, oh, I don't wanna build the gummy ship. I just wanna go to the next planet. Your collection of parts. More creative options will become available to you. But a square just made a gummy ship game? A lot Probably of pretty uh, game successful, dude. It's just messing around and being creative in its editor. That thing's gonna die. Oh. He lived! Maybe. And finally, I'm really excited to announce that Mars First Logistics will be launching into Steam Early Access on the 22nd of June. Oh, cool. It's just cool. two weeks away, and we're really looking forward to seeing what everyone builds in the game. Thank Was it you. Mars Early? No, Mars First Logistics. He said early, yeah, whatever. Early Access, here we go. You'd There's a demo, the guys. of a worldwide flood would be pretty bleak, Wish right? Well, UK and Denmark-based studio D. Gute Fabrik has a different take. From the studio that brought you Mutazione and Sports Friends comes the all-new adventure set in the sprawling post-flood world of Salt Sea. The adventure okay. unfolds differently with every decision, so there's always something new to see in your next playthrough. Mutazione. So I, I've always thought it was Mutazone. The premiere of the stylish, oh. Salt Sea Chronicles. Hello. Hello. 
Hello. We are Dikuta Fabrik. I'm Hannah Nicklin from Dikuta Fabrik, and we made Salt Sea Chronicles. We're super stoked to show you the world premiere of Salt Sea Chronicles today. It's a flooded world story. It reminds you of I'm Dead. You play as a uh, the art style. Crew. Less like turning the tower and going up, but still. Mars Rover, but it was useful the game. <laughs> <laughs> the beginning of the game, you're going to discover that Maya, your captain, has gone missing. And together your ragtag crew Excuse are going me. to host a ship and set out across the Salt Sea Archipelago in search of clues. In each chapter of the game, you'll decide where to head next, who to explore with from the crew when you get there, and what to say to the people that you meet along the way. Salt Sea Chronicles' unique art style is brought to life by beautiful animation. And each location is built on the fragments of this world that came before. Our art team have really done an incredible job. One of my favorite locations is called Los Gatos, and on that island, the people there live symbiotically. <laughs> Let's go get you, man. Oh, Yo, PT, happy belated birthday. As you explore, but like, you'll find a how could you get all those people tagging you in Discord and not salty. say thank really you? Good way to You're disrespectful, story. you. It's called spoils. How's it going, man? <laughs> I don't know what those words are. Daigute fabric is. Oh, is that what they said in there? Okay. Another thing we're super proud of is our exploration. Papa, can you confirm? Um, so we've sort of done away with the walk of shame in adventure games. So if you miss a clue, instead of sort of slowly trading. Means good factory? Oh, island, okay. Cool. Um, you're just going to tap the shoulder button. A new phrase I'll know for about five minutes. I'll totally forget. And be like, what was it? Instantaneously oh, no, I forgot. Can't <laughs> 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 confirm it. Much more organically. I'm in a Discord Salty for a few days. PT, how can you go a single day without using Discord, homie? It's a story about a community and no, I'm kidding. Happy birthday, together. though. And Unless you faked your birthday, you then... Turn, it's going to be rich hacker. and amusing and strange, maybe, and have its own things going on. There's also a strong sense of genre-based storytelling, too. So while you might be new to the world of Salt Sea, you'll know that you're in a... a <laughs> <Scooby -Doo laughs> or a Romeo and Juliet chapter. Sorry, that's been a long one. There are plenty of laughs, but tough choices and meaningful moments too. Our writer's room of award-winning storytellers have done an incredible job. We're so delighted to share Salt Sea Chronicles with you all today. And I can't wait for you to explore the rich world, get to know the wonderful characters, and to hear what paths you chart when you play. My days out using Discord just like it was before Discord was invented. <laughs> you know what? Fair enough. Go to PlayStation, no Switch, right, or PC. this next game it Sorry. Tim keeps texting. Let's see. Oh, Tim wants me to read something. Uh, apologies, but this seems important. Uh, the thing I love most about Day of the Devs, says Tim, as me as Tim, I don't know, uh, is getting to know all these amazing game developers. I love hearing them describe their games and their creative process, but I wish I could hear more. I wish I could be a fly on the wall. He's dropping all their private conversations, all their ups and downs, their triumphs and tribulations, while making a real video game over the course of seven years. Too bad there's no way to do it. Where is there? This is actually pretty cool. Uh, Two-player productions was embedded with Double Fine for the course of seven years uh, while they were making Psychonauts 2, and they made a super hyper duper. I still have to watch that documentary series. The documentary. I have to watch that. Games. Uh, all the intimacy, all the tears, the outrage and joys, and, and all the things that happen in game development that never really gets documented because who has access like this? Uh, so here's a, a very quick sneak peek at their incredibly long series. We highly encourage you to watch this thing. It's, it's amazing. Yeah, I do like a long series about the development of Psychonauts. It looks cool. To get to the dollar amount we're talking about, it's probably going to take financing from a lot of different avenues. Whenever Grasslands is going to start, Tim's is going to start taking our people. So there's a ton of stuff going on right now. It's kind of breaking me. But, you know, it's fun. It'll be really re rewarding when it's done. Hopefully gonna binge it. To I was Corey by Thank you. 
I, once I watch this, I'm going to want a documentary series like this for like every video game that I care about. Even ones I only care to about a little bit. To submit your game for future Day of the Devs, or to just hear about Day of the Devs in general, go to dayofthedevs.com for more info. Thank you to all the incredible sponsors that have been with us since the very beginnings of Day of the Devs. Uh, we're going on 11 years. We could not pay for any of this without these sponsors. Uh, they, they donate to us. Uh, ask for nothing in return except a showcase of incredible games from indie devs all around the world. So please, uh, applause for all the cool logos on the screen. We appreciate you. We couldn't do this without you. Thank you. Thank you again to so the dope. incomparable I Dose it. One. I love the uh, devs so much. Playing the beats uh, for all the transitions between all these amazing games. Uh, ever since we started doing these digital showcases for Day of the Devs, uh, thank you again. You are a hero uh, amongst heroes. Go go check out his music. It's amazing. Hell, Dose One is incredible. Thank you for watching Day of the Devs yet again. If you're looking for more information or you just want to subscribe to the coolest newsletter in all the land, uh, go to dayofthedevs.com, the URL on your screen. Follow us on social media. We got more coming up this year. Thank you to our friend Jeff Keeley. The Summer Game Fest showcase was amazing. We're so happy to be a part of Summer Game Fest for these last few years. How did he Definitely know? Definitely stick around. What if it We're not completely done yet. Uh, what we if have it a sucks? musical performance featuring the sounds of New Caledonia thanks to our friends who made the game Chia. It's worth it. It's really f***ing cool. It's <laughs> happening right now. Hell yeah, that's dope. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I won't have this uh, in the reaction, but let me do this real quick. Guys, uh, again, for YouTube, not for Twitch. We're still going on Twitch. But for YouTube, thank you so much for watching this reaction to Day of the Devs. I love showcasing a bunch of super cool indie games. They're always so freaking awesome. A bunch of games here that I've wishlisted that I can't wait to play later this year or early next year, whatever the case may be. But let me know in the comments what was your favorite game you saw here at Day of the Devs. And for you on Twitch, stick around because we have the Devolver Showcase yet today to watch. So look forward to that. I have to go get my Chinese food in the kitchen. So stay beautiful, stay lovely. And you guys can catch this reaction uh, on YouTube. Like and comment. Thank you. Appreciate it.